In this 3D Printing 101, I'll show you how I printed this huge piece on my Prusa Mark III in a fraction of the time it would normally take with no changes to the hardware. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Ingus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101 video. A few weeks ago, I unveiled my Fallout 4 inspired 3D printer build and the main aspect of that machine was it was mostly 3D printed. The whole base is one single solid 3D printed part. There's no joins or anything. It's just one piece off the machine. But the thing is with FFF slash FDM 3D printers, you have a single nozzle extruding molten material. So the bigger parts get they take exponentially longer time. For example, a cube, by scaling it by 200%, you're not just doubling the print time and material of that cube, you're actually increasing it by roughly eight times. So when you're printing something this big, time and material use, especially when you're prototyping, is pretty important. But before I jump into Prusa Slicer to show you my custom settings, let me explain to you the three main limitations we have in printing quicker. That is heating, cooling, and rigidity of the overall 3D printer's frame. You see, the filament has to be melted, and then it has to be cooled quickly, and the frame has to hold the, the moving components in such a way that they're actually accurate, even when moving around very, very quickly with high amounts of kinetic energy. Now, most 3D printers have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And as you can imagine, with, for example, 1.75 millimeter filament going down to 0.4, it creates a lot of pressure. And with 2.85 millimeter filament going down to 4, it's even greater. And that heat block has to melt the filament quickly and in a controlled manner to turn it from a solid plastic into molten plastic so it can be extruded out of the 3D printer's hot end. But then you need it to cool because if it comes out and then it's just molten, then it's just gonna sag and your print will just fall apart. And that can be a significant issue when trying to print faster because you can see whole layers that haven't completely solidified and cooled as you start to build up on top of them, parts just start to lose all definition and it all falls apart. And then finally, there's rigidity. You can imagine you've got a big, heavy hot end moving around. You move it quicker, 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 quicker. You start to get frame resonances. You start to get inaccuracies. The whole thing shudders and you start to lose dimensional accuracy of your 3D printed part. I've done a video on ghosting, which demonstrates this very, very well. When you do small movements, it can lead to vibrations and artifacts in the 3D printed part's surface. So that's another limitation of your print speed as well. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is what works on my Prusa Mark III, and it's transferable to any other printer, but your results may vary. You might be able to go way faster reliably, or you might have a limitation where you can't quite go as fast. My settings are quite conservative in terms of a fast draft setting, but I find them to be very reliable and I had no failures when printing these parts. Obviously, there has to be some sort of trade-off to reduce the print time on an FDM 3D printer, and that would be your layer height and infill. So, if you have a layer height that's 0.15, for example, and then you change it to 0.3, you can effectively cut your print time in half, but you lose some definition. It depends on the print if that will be noticeable for vertical faces and walls, not really, and top fields, obviously no difference, but for delicate sides and text, small details, you will start to suffer a decrease in print quality. I've done a whole 3D printing 101 already on layer height and nozzle size in this video here. If you wanna go check it out, that should help you get a bit more information in terms of that. But let's just jump right into Prusa Slicer and I'll show you my custom setting, which is 0.3, stupid fast. Alrighty then, here we are in Slicer Prusa Edition. This is not the latest, latest one. It's the 1.4, 1.1 beta but I tend to be a little bit hesitant to upgrading because my job is so dependent on these slices and I have been burnt in the past when people roll out updates that are full of bugs. Anyway, I'm not saying that's what's happened, but I'm sticking with this one, but it should work on any of the Prusa slices. And also it should work across the board in other slices, just transfer the settings across. And this is the part that I mentioned. This is the huge base for my Fallout inspired 3D printer. It's massive, it fills the entire bed. However, if I go to slice it, you'll notice that once I start cutting into the print, 
it's very lightweight. And if I zoom in to some areas, you'll also notice that it has quite a coarse finish. And that's because it's printed at 0.3 millimeter layer heights. As I mentioned, 0.4 nozzles can print quite roughly. You can go up to 3.35 if you really want. Uh, but 0.3 seems to be a good happy medium for my speed and quality requirements. And you'll notice the infill and perimeters are quite low. I cut this way back because one extra line adds just that extra bit of time for each layer. And obviously the less infill you have, the quicker the print finishes and the less material is used. This is obviously a trade-off because this part isn't gonna be as strong as one with more perimeters or more infill. But how strong is the final print? Well, this one, I actually started hacking at it, which was handy because I was testing things. But I don't know, let's, let's try breaking this print using those settings. So I'm gonna grab it here. I'm just gonna try to rip it in half. That's the infill you can hear um, flexing. I'm putting all my strength on it, all uh, a full Angus, which isn't quite equivalent to a full Joel. Nah, nah, I can't do it. So that, that's really strong. Um, even at those infill settings, still more than capable of helping you on your prototyping. But why is there such a significant difference? Well, I think it's best to just show you my settings and how much of a difference they actually make. So under print settings, we have layer height 0.3. So each layer will be 0.3. The first is 0.2, which means it's nice and close. I don't do like, I don't like doing two coarse layer heights on the first layer, especially on the Prusa Mark III, which does the mesh bed leveling. It seems to work nice for me. Again, we still have two shells, uh, two perimeters. You might want to increase this for more strength, but as you as you saw, I couldn't break this. It just, um, yeah, it's tough. And this is where I cut a lot of time down was with the top and bottom infill, which is called horizontal shells in the Prusa Slicer. I did three top and bottom, which is usually more than enough. You might see the infill through it on really big areas, but again, this is for drafts. It doesn't really matter. Next is infill. This is where we save a lot of time as well. 10%, very low, but still, still not too low. I mean, it's still reasonably there. And fill pattern cubic. This is what I love about Prusa Slicer. His, Joseph's pushed a lot of time and money and R&D into developing this slicer. And they've got some really cool settings and they, it keeps getting better. But cubic's one of my favorite infills now because it's a 3D infill. So it actually adds strength in all directions, whereas standard Rectilinear infill only adds strength in one vertical direction. From the side, it's basically like a giant parallelogram. You can kind of crush parts, whereas the cubic actually is 3D and it's strong in all directions. Uh, this is probably up for debate, to be honest, but I've found a lot of, lot of benefits in using cubic and it doesn't take that much longer to print. So 10% cubic is my choice for my draft setting. Skirt and brim, Default, obviously I have a, just a single loop to help the nozzle start extruding properly and the Prusa slicer will also add in a purge just before the print starts. And then support material, none. I designed this with no support material intentionally. You can see the video on how I did that here. But if you can cut support material out, you will greatly reduce your print time. It's a very, very useful skill and you can build in your own supports if you have to have them but having supports be calculated in the slicer and put in will dramatically increase your print time. So try to avoid it if at all possible. For example, these infill areas here, which are bridges, if there was support there, yeah, yeah, that's gonna add a lot of extra time to your printing. No raft, printed raftless. Again, I try to avoid rafts if at all possible, but they are handy for some prints, but for this, don't need them. And then speed. This is where we jack things up a bit. Uh, perimeters 100 millimeters per second, small perimeters 50, external 70, infill 250, solid infill 250, top and bottom uh, 100 and support material 100, but we don't care about that. Bridges 60, you don't want to make bridges too fast or too slow, I left that pretty default. And again, gap fill is also default pretty much. And travel is actually pretty much the same as well, I haven't increased travel, it seems to move quick enough between points. I was a bit worried if I increased travel too much, it might start vibrating the machine and possibly knocking prints loose, so I left that as is. You could push this further, but again, my goal was speed, but also reliability. Now, I don't believe I've changed anything in acceleration, I don't remember anyway, but I would leave these pretty much default. You can increase them to speed up uh, how quickly it gets, how quickly the, the perimeter, for example, gets to speed, but this can also add uh, artifacts and 
uh, stuff like ghosting if you have too high acceleration. And that's pretty much all I've changed, but I've also put special considerations into the filament extrusion temperature. So under the filament settings, you notice I'm running Prusa PLA. And this is actually a default in the slicer for the Prusa filament, the Prusa mint now. Uh, but it's a higher temperature than regular PLA. You'll notice it extrudes at 210, not 185, 190, 200. It's quite hot for PLA. But I found for these prints that the extra temperature helps to kind of get away with a higher speed because if it drops down in certain areas, there's, the plastic will remain molten and it's not going to start under extruding. And also, the higher temperature means the parts tend to be stronger. They tend to have better layer adhesion. And that's what I want for my, my models. You might get, again, less quality uh, finish, a less, lesser quality finish. But again, this is for drafts. And even the overhangs seem to work quite well with that temperature. However, if I'm just using normal PLA on my Prusa with normal settings like 0.15 and that, I actually made a normal PLA setting, which is just 195. So quite a lot cooler. And that gives you a bit better definition out of PLA on the Prusa I found, but for the fast print, it's not that dangerous to bump up the print temperature. Just don't expect uh, supports to release easily if you do that. But the proof is in the pudding, and as you can see, when we export our G-code, it gives us a time estimate out of the Prusa slicer, and it estimates for 11 hours, which was pretty much accurate. So 11 hours for this full bed print, which is more than strong enough for my requirements. For comparison, let me just show you how long it would take to print this model using the optimum 0.15 millimeter layer height default in Prusa Slicer for the Mark III. This is the setting that's recommended for just across the board great prints and it is a very good setting, but obviously it's within uh, Prusa uh, researchers goals to make this setting reliable and a little bit conservative. So keep that in mind, the fill density is 20%. Yeah, not super high, but pretty high. Uh, 0.15 millimeter layer heights. And if we go to print settings, you can see that our speeds are quite conservative, 45 millimeters a second. And then we've got uh, infill at 200, that's fairly high, um, but really not that high. But the layers, this is where it gets interesting. It's two perimeters, which is the same as my settings, but horizontal shells uh, is top seven and bottom five, which gives you a lot of room to account for stuff ups in the print and recover. And as you can see, this is the result. If I scroll down to see the layers, much higher infill, and you can see that this curve is a lot more accurate, but really, does that matter? I don't know, it depends on your results and what you need to achieve. But once you export it, this is the real gotcha. To get that slightly higher print quality and infill density, we are now looking at one day, three hours, and 41 minutes. So basically more than a day to print this and more than double than my draft setting. As you can see from these close up photos, the print quality will not be the best in the world and you might start to get some sort of uh, roughness on your top, top solid infills and you might maybe see the infill through it. Uh, but really this has been fantastic for speeding up my design and prototyping uh, practice here on Maker's Muse. I've been able to pump parts out overnight, come back, test, try, modify, and go back, and it really, really does help, and there's no hardware changes. So if you have a 3D printer with a 0.4 nozzle and you're not game to stick a bigger nozzle on just to print faster sometimes, then give this a shot. And even for the final prints, I'll just bump the infill up, maybe add a few perimeters. It works really, really well, and it's quite reliable. You could probably push it further if you wanted to, but this is something that I've settled on that has been reliable, and that's more important to me than going stupidly, stupidly fast. Maybe that's a new setting I should try, and your results may vary. Your machine might be capable of much higher print speeds because of a better hot end, for example, or a better extruder, or it might be capable of lower print speeds only because of a weaker heat cartridge or a weaker extruder setup. Anyway, if you enjoyed this 3D Printing 101 on Makers Muse, guys, please consider subscribing. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I would love to have you on board. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.